In this tutorial, I will explain all the settings available inside a duplicator in Cavalry for After Effects users. So as an After Effects user, you might be wondering how do you start using duplicator? Duplicator in Cavalry allows you to duplicate shapes in specific distribution mode. I won't be going over different modes in this video, but I will explain differences between specific settings within a duplicator and how to use them. If you download project file available in the description below from Gamroad, you'll be able to see how I put every single scene together, including the cover. I have a simple composition, rectangle shape, which feeds into duplicator. And we've got a bunch of properties. So you got a bunch of transform controls here and here. So what is the difference? I'm going to turn off the debug information to clean up the viewport. So the top properties lets you transform duplicator as a whole. Doesn't matter how big it is, how many shapes, and so on. This applies to position, rotation, scale, and so on. Now the bottom properties allows you to transform duplicated shapes themselves. So for example, if I add a noise to the shape position and increase the values a bit, press play, as you can see, all the shapes are moving independently. But if I do this uh, on the duplicator position itself, everything will move as one unit. So if you want to move duplicator or animate the shapes as a group, you can use these properties. If you want to modify them individually, use the shape ones. Then going down, we have the same thing like opacity and blending modes, which is uh, they act the same way as any other uh, blending modes in like Photoshop or After Effects. Then we have two fields, one for the formers, one for filters. This is where you can add a number of modifiers, uh, for example, a top path. Now, the, the difference between the formers and filters is that the formers modify the shape itself. So if I select a direct selection tool, as you can see, we sliced up our shapes inside the duplicator using these properties. We have new shapes. Filters allows you to simply style your shapes. For example, add a drop shadow, customize it, and so on. Next option, we have a motion blur, which we can turn on and off per layer basis. So if I add noise to position and crank up a distance and maybe frequency as well. Press play. We don't see any no uh, motion blur, but if I enable it on the composition level, as you can see, the layers have motion blur applied to them. We can turn this off and have it as a transform only, which is the faster way of calculating it. Now the input shapes are basically the list of shapes that are being duplicated by duplicator. If I create a number of shapes and change the dimension a little bit and make ellipse a little bit smaller, and if I drag them and drop them inside a duplicator and the connect to new index field, do the same thing with the star, you can connect them by dragging them, by dragging connection directly on top of the input uh, shapes field, like so. Turn this off and group it. Maybe call it source shapes because we can group layers in Cavalry. As you can see, we have three input shapes and they are duplicated in a sequence one, two, three, and so on. One, two, three, one, two, three. Cavalry works with indexes and you can see the index number of connected shapes right here. So if I reorder them, as you can see, the order of duplicated shapes changes. Let's maybe make it a little bit bigger. There we go. 
Now, how can we use this to our advantage? If you go down the list and look at the auto ID option, we have two fields, auto ID and shape ID. If I turn this off, the applicator will use this value to select which shape to duplicate. So if I change it to number two, then we have a star. If I change it to one, then we have rectangles. Auto ID makes duplicated duplicate the shapes in a sequence. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. You can see the shapes ID if you turn on the debug information, which is helpful to identify um, shape IDs and other properties. But we don't always have to use the, the same sequence to duplicate the shapes. We can mess with it a little bit. If I add random modifier to the shape ID, and then specify minimum and maximum values as the same values as the range of shapes that are being inputted to the duplicator. So from zero to two, same here, zero to two. Then we have a random distributions of the shapes. And if you play with a seed, as you can see, we can modify how everything looks. And all of this is responsive. Now let's focus on the opacity. We have shape opacity field, visibility and opacity. This opacity uh, option allows you to fade in and out, duplicate as a whole. Shape opacity lets you fade individual shapes, but this only happens if you plug in a modifier such as noise. If I specify minimum to zero, max to a hundred, remove this keyframe and press play and as you can see we have a noise fading shapes in and out and this happens on individual shape level shape visibility simply lets you turn on and off shapes either as a group or on individual level and we can do this by adding a modifier for example you can add a modulate Modulate works on outputting a pattern of repeated numbers using modulo function. So for example, if I type in two, every second uh, shape is visible and every other one is not. If I change it to three or four, as you can see, we can have a um, different distribution than basic grid. You can always use your own custom pattern so if we start with zero, type in five, maybe six, seven, and so on. As you can see, you can produce unique results. This is useful for basically hiding and showing specific shapes in a pattern. Now, shape time offset is used when you want to delay animation of individual um, shapes that are being inputted into duplicator. So let me demonstrate this on different example. We have a simple um, shape rectangle. If I animate this shape and go to graph editor and maybe to the oscillate. So it repeats the animation and we can do something like magic easing, maybe anticipate. So we have a, bound, a bouncing box. So if I put this shape inside the duplicator, press play, nothing will happen. This is because the duplicator will ignore any transform keyframes or animations from the source uh, shapes as a default. The way to fix it is if we disconnect it, the way to fix it is to group your um, shape itself and then plug in this group into a duplicator. Turn it on, hide the group, and then let's maybe space this out a little bit. If I press play, everything bounces. And now if I add a stagger to, to shape time offset, and maybe increase the stagger amount. 
then we have basically the same animation of a cube bouncing up and down repeated across every single shape and every single shape is delayed by 20 frames. And this is all responsive because I can increase the number of cubes. Let's face this out, press play. And there we go. So this covers the main features of the duplicator. Now, if we go to masks, we have two options, clipping masks and track mats. So if I make a big shape such as massive rectangle, and then add it to duplicator mask, it works as expected. A simple mask. If I duplicate the mask itself and maybe move it to the side and again add it to the mask field, I can then create a specific look and um, by selecting different masks modes like unite, divide, and so on, like intersect. As you can see, I'm literally cutting out the parts which are not masks. Track modes are very straightforward. You just add a track mat. The current version of Cavalry 2.1, uh, we only have alpha mats available and alpha inverted. In the future, uh, there is a plan to incorporate Luma mats as well. Now, the advanced tab has a few other options which are not commonly used, but are important. For example, you can make the shape 2.5D. This works the same way by turning this uh, 3D uh, icon. This is useful when you have a camera in a scene and want to rotate it, for example, like this. So you can change perspective. And then we have um, options which are related to Lottie. You can read about them on the Cavalry website on the documentation. I'll provide a link below. If you want to have a wireframes visible instead of shapes themselves, you can turn it on. This does not work with a group because group by itself is an empty object. So what you need to do is you have to plug in actual shape into a duplicator. So this way you can see the outline, well, wireframe of um, duplicated shapes. This option just makes the layer hidden uh, if you just want to hide it. It's the same way as turning it on and off. So we have an ellipse, a green square, and gray duplicator. So if we parent everything to an ellipse, so then I can move the whole setup as a group, then things are being drawn in the opposite way than they are arranged on the timeline. So ellipse is at the very bottom, then duplicator, then green square. So for example, if I move this like this a little bit, this is where this draw on top of parent menu comes in. If I turn this off, then the parent itself would be drawn on top. If I go to the green square, it has the same option. So now everything is being drawn in the timeline hierarchy way. So I can move this around, same with duplicator. Freeze calculations button uh, is useful if you have animation. For example, if I add noise to the shape position, crank up the values and press play. And for example, I like this layout, but I want to freeze it. I can simply turn on freeze the calculations. And we can export this or use this later on in the animation without worrying about noise changing. You can easily add a um, modifier, like an oscillator here, change the values from zero to one. As if you press play, as you can see, the shape will freeze and play, freeze and play. And you can play with those values to make it more or uh, happen more often or less. If I change the scale to something like four, then we have basically kind of like a glitch effect. Now, next group of um, options are related to these tools over here. So if I select all my three layers and add them to a horizontal layout group, then everything is aligned side by side. The problem is 
the scale of this object is not uniform. That's why I have to reset it and use actual mesh value. Now, horizontal layer group uh, is simply a tool that lets you align um, layers or objects in your composition based by their size. So if I just simply drag and drop it, everything is nicely aligned and we can add a little bit of spacing. Now, if I would like to exclude it from the layout, I can simply select this box, but then the whole object is still parent to, to the horizontal layer group for whatever reason you need it. And you can play with the settings like specifying different way of aligning this cell itself. If I simply trim the layers, and then if I add them to um, scheduling group, as you can see, everything is arranged on that composition, one after another. It's a, it's a very simple way to um, stagger layers based on the duration. And again, we can basically turn this on and off for whatever reason, if you have a use for it. Same thing by using guide layer. You can turn this on and off. So this layer, well, this applies to every single layer, but in this case, duplicator, it will be visible in precoms or invisible in the precompositions and so on. Now to explain index context, I need to have a different setup so it makes more sense. Cavalry works with indexes. So as you can see, everything has an index, like input shapes, and then every single shape that is being duplicated has its own index, and so on and so on. If I delete everything, create a text shape, then create a um, string generator, this will simply generate a bunch of numbers. If I change this to zero and one, then create context index tool and simply take this um, input and plug it into the number itself, then nothing's happening. So this tool basically gets the context of the layer and then it can change it further down the line. It will make sense just in a second. So if I select my text shape and holding option, plug it into duplicator in a simple grid array. Then we can see that this text shape automatically creates numbers based on their ID. So if I turn on my debug information, we can see like zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. So this is dynamic. As you can see, it's fully responsive. So if I change the distribution to linear, make it vertical and maybe create five copies and make a shape slightly smaller. There you go. We have a nice column of numbers. If I take this duplicator and put this into another duplicator and again change it to linear setup, make it slightly smaller. As you can see, the numbers are being duplicated top to bottom, top to bottom. Now, if I make a few more copies, of this group duplicator and maybe space them out a little bit. As you can see, we have basically an index number for every single uh, copy of every single shape, but we're using index number from the column duplicator inside a group. We can change that by simply changing the upstream depth to two. Then we are using simply the ID or index of every single a column inside this group, as you can see, and this is replicated up and down. So if I change this to something like five, still keep it at one. Now, if I duplicate this group and call it something like grid and maybe space this out. So what's happening now is that the each um, text uh, shape is creating an ID number for itself and it's being duplicated over and over and over again. But if we change the context index to two, then we're only using IDs from this group to duplicate them over and over. If we change this to three, then we're changing the 
which um, IDs of the shape itself are being used to replicate across this grid setup. Now this context and upstream depth might be a bit easier to understand if we open something called Mesh Explorer, which I pinned over here, and we select our duplicator. And as you can see, if the shape is too complex, it won't display. So I had to reduce the number of um, copies made on each single duplicator. There we go. So this is a little bit simple setup, but as you can see, the Mesh Explorer shows you how many sub meshes it has, we have to go through till we get to actual mesh at the bottom, which is this text shape. So by using the context index upstream depth, we simply can specify how deep we go to get the value we need. We're basically limiting how many um, indexes we go through. As you can see, each one of these um, submeshes has its own index and this sits in its own group and so on and so on. So this is similar to basically figuring out how deep we go to get the value we need. This is a little bit confusing at first, but this could be useful when you're designing specific um, scenes with like um, name, titles, uh, data, and so on. And you want to limit how deep the duplication goes. I hope now you understand how to use Duplicator to its full potential. I have prepared a number of um, compositions for you so you can see how those things are being used with a bunch of setups and all of them are animated. Make sure to download the file for free from uh, Gamroad so you can spend your time studying it and figuring out how you can use this to your advantage when creating scenes inside Cavalry. Thanks for watching.